Hi, it's Bob from the Brush and Bolt Club. Today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on how to paint a Warhammer 40,000 Cataphractic Terminator in Space Wolf colours. If you'd like to pull me, my coffee and Patreon page are linked below. Now on to the video. This is the Cataphractic Terminator that we're going to be working on today. I've done his lightning claws like kind of frost claws or something like that, as they always seem to have been frosty or wolfy. So I've done them with a nice blue claw to them, but that is what we are going to be working on today. So the first colour I'm going to use is Citadel Corn Red. I could be using this to do the main bulk of the fists on his power fists. Now this is just a personal choice, this one. If you want to keep them in the same colour as the rest of the armour, you can do. But I'm just breaking up the colour of my troops with some red fists and also a few red pauldrons too on certain miniatures just to give them that grey and red because the colours go really nicely together. So give them a nice smooth layer of the corn red if you're using it. And we can move on to the next colour. With the red done, we are now going to use some Citadel Catachan Flesh, and we're going to use that to do his skin. So just use a little bit of that to paint on there, and we can move on to the next one. The head here is a normal Space Wolf head that I've cut the bottom half off and stuck on instead of the little Cataphracty Helms. Now I'm going to use a little bit of Citadel Araman Blue, using this for each of the blades on his Lightning Claws. Next up, I'm going to use some Citadel Retributor armour. I'm going to use this to paint all the gold trim on the miniature. There's quite a few pieces of gold trim or trim on the Cataphracty Terminators all around where the head is visible there. Got bits on the pauldrons, on the chest, on the legs. There is quite a bit of gold that you can put on these, which looks really, really nice. Now I'm going to use some Citadel Bane Blade Brown. I'm going to use this to do all of the fur and the leather strips that hang down from the shoulders and he's got them hanging over his groin too. So give those a coat of Bane Blade Brown and we can move on. I'm going to use some Citadel Rakarth Flesh. I'm going to use this to do just that little rune stone on the back there. So not a lot to do with that one really. It's more of a detail from a bit of added to it. I'm going to do all the joints in the armour and the armour seals now with Vallejo Black or whichever black you're using. So you're just going to use a brush to go over all of those sections where you've got that kind of lumpy kind of rubber stuff over each of the joints between pieces of battle plate. Now I'm going to use some Citadel Iron Hand Steel. We use this to do any of the bits that we're doing with a kind of silvery metallic. So you've got a few little different sections on these miniatures that you could use that for, like pieces of tube in the fans on the back of the armour and things like that. So just get them nice flat layer of iron hand steel or lead belcher if you're using that. Then we can move on to the next one. I'm 
Now we're going to use a little bit of Sithel Agrax Airshade. We're going to be using this just to do all of the gold. Next we have a super fast layer of Citadel Seraphim Sepia and this will need to be used on the runestone on the back there. Obviously if you've got any skulls or anything like that on there that you're painting as well you can use the Seraphim Sepia on that too. Now I'm going to go on to Citadel Carrowberg Crimson. I'm going to paint this over all of the bits that we did with Corn Red. So each of those Lightning Claw gloves. Now it's time for some Drakenhof Nightshade. I'm going to use that on each of the claws. I'm going to use some Citadel Nuln Oil to do all the silvery metallics and all of the grey armour too. So just give them a good coat and then it's on to the next one. I'm going to use Citadel Wildwood Contrast just to do all of the fur. Now for the fur you can use pretty much any brown colour and highlight. If I'm doing fur I tend to use a brown colour and then I'd use Rakarth Flesh mixed in with it to highlight. So if you were using that to do the fur instead of using this method then that's fine. But you could also use like Gorgrunter fur and different contrasts like that over the Bane Blade brown. That'll give you some nice colours for the fur. Now I'm going to use some Citadel Snakebite Leather Contrast and this is going to be to do all of those little leather tassely kind of bits on the front there and on each of the shoulders. Of the devil, if you want to use a little bit of Citadel Gorgrunt Affair, I'm just going to use this quickly on those little stringy bits holding on the runestone up at the top there. I'm going to start reapplying the colour now. I'm going to start with Citadel Mechanica Standard Grey on the armour. Now, the arm was sprayed with Mechanica Standard Grey spray paint before the video started. What I'm trying to do here is think about where the light is going to be hitting the miniature and painting the Mechanica Standard Grey onto those areas. You want to think about where it's going to be shaded so like the undersides of the legs and the arms and that kind of thing are going to be a lot darker so you don't want to be putting the Mechanica Standard Grey there, mainly the areas that will be catching the light. The first highlight we're going to use some Citadel Dawnstone. We're going to think about where the light's coming from once again and you're going to use this on about 50% of the area that you used the Mechanica Standard Grey on. So you do want to try and keep the Dawnstone on the top surfaces so that they are getting the most light and makes it look like the light is catching them from above. 
but making sure that you still have those shaded areas and areas where you might just have the Mechanica standard grey on show. We're going to finish off the grey of the armour using Citadel Administratum Grey. You're going to do about 50% of the area that you did with the Dawnstone, probably even less than that, maybe only about 25%. I'm going to be using this mainly to do edge highlights with a few smaller, wider areas in the bits that are catching the most light. Now, it's a really good colour to do edge highlights. This is quite bright while fitting in with the Dawnstone quite well, and it will give you those really nice edge highlights to make all the details stand out. Now I'm going to use some Citadel Retributor armour. I'm going to start reapplying this to the gold. So again, thinking about where the light is going to be catching this gold and doing more of these colours in those areas. And that'll give you the look that the light is catching it and making it really, really shine. Highlight. We're going to be using a little bit of Citadel Liberator Gold, so you can see the areas that the light is catching. The light is from above there, pretty much. So you can use actual light sources to decide where you want to have that shine and add the Liberator Gold to those areas. That will give you quite a good realistic look and shine, kind of like a true metallic metal effect. If you want to do that, I tend to look at it. Just think about where it's going to be catching the most light, and then do it that way instead. But it does have a pretty similar effect. The final layer for the gold, I'm going to use some Vallejo Model Air Chrome, mix that with the Liberator Gold, and we're going to use this to edge highlight all of those gold areas, and the areas where you put lots of Liberator Gold, we're going to use a little bit more in those areas, just so you get that really, really shiny part, because the pigment in the Model Air Chrome, it will make it shine absolutely loads, and it looks great once the light catches it. Now we're going to return to the red on the lightning claws. We're going to use Citadel Corn Red and start reapplying the colour. So like you did with the grey, think about where the light is going to be catching the lightning claws, or the power glove kind of attachment for them, and start applying the corn red to those areas. So you're going to leave the shade in the recesses, and then make sure that the areas that be catching light are getting the corn red applied, and the areas which aren't, sort of like the underside of, say, the thumb and the underside of the glove itself, is going to be a lot more shaded, so just leave that with the shade in the recesses and in those areas, and then you can just highlight the undersides a little bit with one of the later colours. So we're going to highlight the corn red with Citadel Wasdaka Red, and once more we're going to do about 50% of this in the areas that will be catching the most light. That will give them quite a nice effect once they are all painted up. Final highlight for the reds is going to be Citadel Pink Horror. This is going to be to mainly do edge highlights and the odd little touch of extra colour. But the edges that you want to be highlighting are going to be the top edges and the edges where the light will be catching them. So if you're looking at the light from above as always, wherever the light is catching it, that is where you want to do those little edge highlights. What it also does is it makes those details stand out a lot and makes it like the light is catching it. Now I'm going to use some Citadel Catachan Flesh. I'm going to use this to start reapplying colour to the face. Now because they have quite squished faces in these little Terminator suits, I'm using a really thin brush here. I think it's the Army Painter Insane Detail Brush maybe, or an equivalent of. You're just going to be picking out the details of the head, and the creases on the forehead, the cheeks, the nose, that kind of thing. 
we're now going to add a little bit of Mornfang Brown to the skin. So we're just going to start applying that and highlighting the skin with Mornfang Brown. I'm going to be thinking about the light hitting this as well. So you're going to be getting the top edges of those cheeks and the nose and the mouth too. And also the top of the head, which would be getting a lot more light than everywhere else. Now we're going to use a little bit of Citadel Balor Brown. We're going to mix this with the Mornfang Brown. And we're going to start adding this as a smaller highlight. So we are using uh, Army Painter Insane Detail Brush here. It's ever so slightly thinner than the one that I was using, which is one that I picked up years ago and doesn't seem to have a name on it, but it works a treat. But the Insane Detail Brush here from Army Painter is doing a great job of picking out those details. It's really, really thin, holds its point, and it is really good for doing these little highlighters. So you're going to be highlighting all the areas where it'd be collecting light and where there's details to show, so the creases by the eyes, the creased brow, that kind of thing. Working on the lightning claws now. Now you can, if you want to, do loads and loads of layers just by adding increasing amounts of white just to get them going down to the white at the end. I think I'm going to use like three or four layers maximum on the lightning claws here to get them to be like frost claws or something of that ilk. There's only going to be three or four layers total, just to save a bit of time. But if you want to, you can do that a lot smoother by just doing a lot more layers and a lot thinner lines when you are adding the extra white to the mix. So we're going to add some white to the Araman Blue now. I'm going to do about 60% of the area that we've just covered with the Araman Blue. Now we are going for a little bit more white mixing with the previous mix. We're just going to do about 50% of the previous layer as well, just so that we can get that on there and get the claws so they look like they're lightning towards the edges. You also want to be running this colour down the edge of the claws as well. So you've got the th front edge and two at the back because they're like little triangles. Like if you cut it to the cross section, you have like almost a triangle there. So you want to do each of those edges with this colour too, just so that when you add the final colour which is coming up next which is Vallejo White or whichever white you use, you're just going to use this to do a little tiny bit of white at the end of each one and then you're going to use the side of the brush to edge highlight each of those claws. Now I'm going to use a little bit of Citadel Ballor Brown and this is going to be to do the leather. So what I want to do here is use the very tip of the Insane Detail Brush, a really, really thin, small brush. And I'm just going to be doing rough edges down each side and the bottom of each of these leather bits. By doing the brown at 90 degrees from the edge that you are painting, you will get that rough edge that looks as though it's been a bit worn and scuffed over the years. We're now going to add a little bit of Citadel Rackarth Flesh to the mix. We are now going to do one little highlight on all of these little leather bits. And exactly the same as before, just covering a smaller area, you want to be doing the brush strokes at 90 degrees to the edges that you are working on. You can also use this layer to do a little diagonal streak if you want to, or something like that to make it look like the leather has been cut. Next up, it's going to be Citadel Thondia Brown. We're going to use this to reapply colour to the fur. You'll probably get away with dry brushing this early layer, to be honest, or wet brushing, 
just to get some of that colour back on there you're going to have the shade in the recesses so as long as you're not getting the colour into those recesses that's fine but if you are hopefully it shouldn't matter too much just try and get a little bit less on your brush when you're applying it and you should be fine Okay, so we're going to add some Rakarth flesh to the Thondia brown. I'm just going to start highlighting some of the pieces of fur on the lower edges of the fur on the shoulder and the fur on the front. Because I want to have it kind of dark at the top and then getting lighter as it goes down his shoulder and down the front. Once more, we're adding a little bit more Citadel Rakarth flesh. And we're going to start highlighting some of these parts. Now the thing to remember is if you are doing fur like this and you want it to be lighter at the bottom you don't want to just do kind of 50% of each piece of fur and start highlighting each piece of fur with those highlighted colours because it makes the fur look quite like quite bitty and a bit strange so you want to have more highlighting going on in the areas where you want it to be lighter in the fur as a whole so these parts here you can see they've done quite a lot of each bit of fur with this colour by using a tiny bit of Citadel Rakarth Flesh just to colour in that rune stone at the back there. I'm going to mix a little bit of Vallejo White with the previous fur mix. We're going to use that on the fur, just doing a few little highlights on those bottom areas where it's catching the most light and where the fur is lighter. I'm also going to use this mix. I think maybe just do a little highlight on that rune stone as well. Because there's only the one there, you don't really need to do massive extra layers and details, just as long as you've got the colour there and a bit of a highlight, it should be fine. If there's more of them and you need to define against similar coloured things like skulls and stuff, I'd put a few more layers on there. Next up, we're going to use some Vallejo White and we're going to work on his eyes. So again, using the Army Painter Insane Detail Brush and getting a tiny little bit of paint, dragging the brush from his nose to the outside of his head. That way you don't risk getting a little blob of white on his nose. Like so. He's a wolf, so he's getting a little bit of Cassandora yellow over each eye. So it gives them that little yellow hue. He thought he's smoking plenty. Like so. Now we're going to use a little bit of Vallejo Black to just put a little spot in each eye. Now I'm going to use a tiny little bit of Citadel Thondia Brown and this is just to add a few little highlights to the hair. Now usually with black I would be doing German Grey and then a bit of Mechanica Standard Grey or something like that. But for this kind of hair colour and to go with this kind of skin tone you don't really want to look that grey because it will just look like grey hair if you use greys to highlight. So a little bit of Thondia Brown will keep it dark but also give it that little bit of colour like hair has. Now I'm going to use Citadel Iron Hand Steel. I'm going to use this to reapply some of the colour to the silvery metallic sections. And finally, a little bit of Vallejo Model Air Chrome. We're just going to use this to do some edge highlights on those silvery metallics and also to do some of the little rivets on the leather part too. Like so. And this is the finished Cataphracti Space Wolf. I'm really pleased with how it turned out. The colours look quite nice and when it's all fitted together with the rest of the Terminators, they do look pretty swish. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and if you have, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future content. Also, think about subscribing to some of our other social media, link below. Thanks very much.
you like the channel, you enjoy the content, and you'd like to support me, my coffee and Patreon pages are linked below. Thanks very much.